Say what? To cackle, cackle. Like the cackle, cackle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my favorite thing to do in Austria voice, because Arnold Schwarzenegger and I are both from Austria. Neither of us sound very Austrian. So I like to do Arnold Schwarzenegger lines in Austria's voice. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Your name's Sarah Connor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what does he say? It's a dead cat. No, what is it? It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. <laughs> yes. Can you say put that cookie down in Austria? Put that cookie down. <laughs> <laughs> say what? Um, Mariazzo. Mariazzo? Oh, that little thing he calls his little girl. Oh, what does he call it? Mariazzo. Mariazzo? Mariazzo? Maria <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from my nether region. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just caught myself imagining what would happen if you met John Delancey on the set. Did that ever happen? No. Oh. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I just have a, and I'm sorry if it doesn't come out right or something, but... Gesundheit. Um, when, <laughs> when people say I'm sorry needlessly, I tell them Gesundheit. Gesundheit. This <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm so sad. Because I, I always found voice acting very interesting, but I actually was almost more fascinated by the process that happens before you get to the microphone. Oh, okay. like, I don't know Japanese, so I would go and translate stuff in German. Um, but um, is there, what would you suggest, that, like, if I want to ever invest myself more, like, where it could be voice acting and then maybe also doing more um, adapting? So, a script adapting? Yeah. Yeah, like the that. script adapting is a very coveted position at Funimation because it's a it's a portable job you can take with you to conventions, you can go visit your friends and still do the script adapting. Um, I don't know how John Bergmeier is our head writer. I don't know how they take submissions for the script adapting nowadays. Yeah, I mean, it would be kind of a I side think thing because my, my, um, my career really is childcare right now, but right. it's something I am interested in. Well, I, you know what's interesting is I've, I had a, a fan uh, named Kenneth um, who was like seven years ago, I'm going to make a show. It's going to be the best anime ever. It's going to be called Prince Adventures. And I'm like, you go, kid. And I was like encouraging to him. And now he's got like, I mean, I'm doing a Prince Advent Adventures panel. What time is that one at? Oh, wow. oh. Cool. Prince Adventures is going to be at 7 p.m. same room. 7 p.m. right here. And this is an anime that he created from scratch when he was a fan and he just like, he's like, I'm, I'm going to be the best, this is going to be amazing and he just never stopped and he solicited my help and other people's help and now it's like got a business plan and 13 episodes and oh, wow. like it's, it just needs to be funded and it will be huge. It's got Vic and me and Hi. Chris Sabat and Johnny and Flash and a bunch of people doing voices in it once it's finally animated and we may even get to do prelay on it which prelays where you get to do the dialogue first and then they animate to it, which would be a first. And he's got Gonzo Studios doing the, I think Gonzo doing the cool. little dry dry stuff. Or someone who worked for Gonzo and has now split off, but they did a bunch of Gonzo work, so. You can do anything you put your mind to, yes. Just super quick, are they usually looking for translators too? Uh, yeah, translating is one of the, uh, Translating is one of the, the things that's probably got just sort of a standard, you know, here's where you submit your resume, here's where you submit your work sample. The Funimation website probably has all the information you need on that. But in terms of Japanese translating, my friend Liesl Wilkins, Wilkerson, who uh, is whatever the blonde chick in Street Fighter and has done a bunch of other <laughs> anime stuff, she's Can from... Yeah, is that her name? Yeah. I'm not a, I don't savvy Street Fighter, That's so. Okay. But she's awesome, and she does Japanese translating, but she does it, she'll like, she'll like text me from, from, she's like, I'm at the Grammys, or I'm at the Golden Globes, I'm doing an interview with Al Pacino, because she does translating for Japanese uh, radio. So when radio stations, television stations, need someone to interview Americans, she does it, <laughs> does the Japanese translate. Hmm. Ja uh, cool. Japanese d uh, is one of the, the it's a, uh, Craigslist also has a lot of jobs that they'll put out for translating as well. Hmm. And once you get in the translator community, it's a small community. Hmm. So if someone translates for anything, they probably know someone who translates for uh, Japanese <coughs> anime, and it's only a hop, skip, and a jump until you're rolling in money and throwing it at the people who never liked you. <laughs>
<laughs> That's not nice. You should keep the money. <laughs> um, how did you learn to do voice acting? I studied acting from the time I was in sixth grade, and I went to a conservatory college acting school where we did acting from eight in the morning till 11 at night in some form wow. or another for four years. And so uh, voice acting is just an extension of acting for me. The actual job of <coughs> voice acting is slightly different. It's got some mechanics to it um, that you have to learn. Doing fight reactions. <laughs> You know, learning how, like, you really have to, you really got to tense your muscles up here to make them noises. <laughs> but um, sort of the mechanics I learned on the job doing uh, Dragon Ball Z. And uh, none of us knew what we were doing back then. And it's been kind of fun with Kai to go back and redub some of the stuff we've done, because it's like, oh my god, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't believe that got through. And, and then you're, you're, you're better 15 years later. Yes? Did you do Jolly's voice? Who? Jolly. No. But I can do it. It sounds like this. Ah, I'll jolly! Right? <laughs>